So I'm, oh, here comes some more. Come on up. <laughs> Room for everyone. Hi. So I have a little story for you today that I used to read to my children when they were your age over and over and over again. And I look forward to sharing it with you today. This is called, this is called Timothy Goes to School. So I'll try to show you these pictures as we go along. Timothy's mother made him, uh, okay, Timothy's mother made him a brand new sunsuit for the first day of school. Hooray, said Timothy. Timothy went to school in his new sunsuit with his new book and his new pencil, and he was very excited. Good morning, said Timothy. Good morning, said Mrs. Jenkins, the teacher. Timothy, said Mrs. Jenkins, this is Claude. Claude, this is Timothy. I'm sure you'll be the best of friends. So Timothy's smiling at Claude, and Claude is not so much smiling. Hello, Timothy. Uh, hello, said Timothy. Nobody wears a sunsuit on the first day of school, said Claude. During playtime, Timothy hoped and hoped that Claude would fall into a puddle because Timothy was feeling bad about what Claude had said to him. But he didn't. When Timothy came home, his mother asked, how was school today? Nobody wears a sunsuit on the first day of school, said Timothy. I will make you a beautiful jacket, said Timothy's mother. Timothy wore his new jacket the next day. Hello, said Timothy to Claude. You're not supposed to wear party clothes on the second day of school, said Claude. All day, Timothy wanted and wanted Claude to make a mistake, but he didn't. And when Timothy went home, his mother asked, how did it go? You're not supposed to wear party clothes on the second day of school, said Timothy. Don't worry, said Timothy's mother. Tomorrow, you just wear something in between like everybody else. The next day, Timothy went to school in his favorite shirt. Look, said Timothy, you are wearing the same shirt as I am. No, said Claude, you are wearing the same shirt that I am. Well, during lunch, Timothy wished and wished that Claude would have to eat all alone, but he didn't. And after school, Timothy's mother could not find Timothy. Where are you, she called. I'm never going back to school, said Timothy. Why not, called his mother. Because Claude is the smartest and the best at everything, and he has all the friends, said Timothy. You'll feel better in your new football shirt, said Timothy's mother. Timothy did not feel better in his new football shirt. That morning, Claude played the saxophone. I can't stand it anymore, said a voice next to Timothy. It was Violet. You can't stand what? Timothy asked Violet. Grace, said Violet. She sings, she dances, she counts up to a thousand, and she sits next to me. During playtime, Timothy and Violet stayed together. And Violet said, I can't believe you've been here all along. Will you come home and have cookies with me after school, Timothy asked. On the way home, Timothy and Violet laughed so much about Claude and Grace that they both got the hiccups. And that's the end of the book, but that's not the end of the story. Because what happened later was that the next week, Timothy and Violet were playing in the playground together because they became good friends. And they came across Claude sitting by himself in the playground. So they kind of remembered that they didn't really like Claude very much because he was so popular and could do everything. 
but they decided to be brave and take a chance, and they went over and said, what are you doing, Claude, sitting here by yourself? And he said, nothing really, I don't have anything to do. So they asked him, do you want to play with us? And he said, well, okay, what do you want to do? And they said, I don't know, what do you want to do? And then, and then Alice came over and she wanted to see what was going on, so the four of them were there. And they couldn't figure out what to do, said Alice. So Alice said, let's dance. And the other said, we don't know how to dance, we can't dance. And Alice said, I'll teach you how to dance because I've been getting dancing lessons and it's not hard. So Alice taught them how to dance and they all had a lot of fun. And Claude even came in and played the saxophone and they were all dancing around together. So what I want you to think about here is when you have a gift, when you're able to do something that other kids can't do, you have a lot more fun if you share that gift and maybe even teach other kids to do what you know how to do already. And that's it. That's the story. And I think we sing them out.